is good for this agenda. Justifying the police state because of war is good for this agenda. Austerity because of so much money being spent on war is good for this Hunger Games agenda. And that's why there's always money for war, but not for people in trouble. Oh, gee. Um, the endless war. What um, they have chosen as their war is the war on terror. Because when, when do you know a war on terror is over? You never do. You never know when there's going to be another attack. So a war on terror is never over, at least in your mind. And this is George Orwell's um, endless war in 1984, the endless war to keep people um, under control and uh, justify surveillance. Um, the war on terror is a war on freedom. That's what it's there for. And it's been justified to delete freedom after freedom in the name of protecting the people from terrorism. Um, there are many reasons for it. These are two of them, the war on terror. One, justify invasion of countries on your target list. I'll come to them in a minute. Two, justify the police state to protect people from terrorism, which is not what the police state's really about. And it's fear. Get the people in fear. When people are in fear, they will give their power away to those or that which they think will protect them from what they've been manipulating to fear. So, the grand chessboard. This is a book by Sabigniew Brzezinski, Jimmy Carter's um, national security advisor and a very prominent Democon. And if you want to know what's, what's coming, read Brzezinski's books. He don't say this is what's coming. What he says is this is what should happen and what he's telling you is the agenda planned to happen. And in this book, came out in 1998, uh, The Grand Chessboard, um, he said that if you can control this um, area of the world, Eurasia, uh, from Europe across to China and from Russia down into the Middle East, then you, um, you will control everything if you control Eurasia. Now, I'm going to come back to that map in a minute after we've been on a little journey of documenting. <laughs> in September 2000, an organization in America of neocons behind the Republican Party um, at a, an organization called the Project for the New American Century. In September 2000, they produced a document which called on um, America to fight uh, uh, wars, simultaneous wars, to bring about regime change in a list of countries that they named. Um, this is what they said, American forces to fight and decisively win multiple simultaneous major theater. These are some of the countries they mentioned September 2000 for regime change. Iraq, Libya, Syria, Iran, North Korea, China. Uh, you might uh, recognize those <coughs> countries in the light of what's happened since. In January 2001, just a, a very few months after the document was published, the people that produced it, like um, uh, Robert Kagan, William Crystal, uh, Dick Cheney, uh, Donald Rumsfeld, Paul Wolfowitz, Dove Zakheim, and Richard Pearl, came to power with the Bush administration, either directly, I mean, they controlled the Pentagon and uh, the White House, or in the background, the people that wrote that document. And they said something else in that document in September 2000. Further, the process of transformation, this regime change of country after country, is likely to be a long one, absent some catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor. One year to the month after that document was published, nine months after the people that wrote it came to power with Bush, America had what Bush called at the time the Pearl Harbor of the 21st century, 9-11. And as a result of 9-11, that, that list of countries has been justified in the war on terror, in being ticked off amid catastrophic slaughter and suffering. Um, this is um, General Wesley Clark. He was a NATO Supreme Allied Commander. 
And he went on a program called Democracy Now! in 2007, uh, where he said that a few days, literally days, after 9-11, he went to the Pentagon and he met Rumsfeld and Wolfowitz, the uh, Secretary of Defense and Deputy Secretary of Defense, both neocons involved in that document, of course. And then he went down to see a general in the Joint Chiefs of Staff that's supposed to run the Pentagon, that doesn't really. Uh, a friend of his, and uh, this general, he said, said uh, to him, we're going to invade Iraq. This is days after 9-11. He said, well, we're going to raid Iraq. Well, he, the guy didn't know. Because of compartmentalization, he probably didn't. Uh, and then a few weeks later, uh, Clark said, he came back to the Pentagon, saw the same general, and said to him that we're, we're in Afghanistan by then. Why aren't we invading Iraq? I thought we said we're going to invade Iraq. And he said, the uh, general said to him, it's worse than that, sir. He said he picked up a piece of paper and he said, I've just had this from upstairs, Rumsfeld's office. We're going to attack seven countries in five years. Names? Iraq, Libya, Syria, Iran. It's the same countries on the list of the project for the new American century. This is what Clark said on that program. They, the project for the new American century, uh, wanted us to destabilize the Middle East, turn it upside down, make it under our control. It's all manipulated, has been from the start. Now we come back to Rumsfeld's Eurasia, not Rumsfeld's, um, Brzezinski's Eurasia, and look at these countries and where they are that's either been attacked or is now being demonized and prepared for some kind of conflict, all in that area of uh, Eurasia. 9-11 uh, was a problem reaction solution to trigger this sequence of regime change. And um, if people um, think that um, the American government or British government or any of these governments wouldn't create terrorist attacks to justify action that they couldn't justify without the attack, well, let's go back to 1962 and the Joint Chiefs of Staff in the Pentagon, and a man, Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, called Lyman L. Lemnitzer. A document came to light from the official archive in America called Operation Northwoods, which described exactly that plan in 1962. It seems that Kennedy, then President, but not for much longer, put a stop to it. Uh, this is a guy called James Banford. Um, he is a former... Uh, investigative producer with ABC in America, and um, he wrote this in a book called Body of Secrets, which was a, an expose of the National Security Agency, talking about Operation Northwoods. Codenamed Operation Northwoods, the plan which had the written approval of the chairman and every member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, called for innocent people to be shot on American streets, for boats carrying refugees fleeing Cuba to be sunk on the high seas, for a wave of violent terrorism to be launched in Washington, D.C., Miami, and elsewhere. People would be framed for bombings they did not commit. Planes would be hijacked. Using phony evidence, all of it would be blamed on Castro, thus giving Lemnitzer and his cabal the excuse, as well as the public and international backing, they needed to launch their war. Anyone recognize that technique? Um, the 9-11 planes, I've been saying for years and now, I say they were flown from the ground. They certainly weren't flown by people who struggled to fly frickin' one-engine one, one Cessnas. I mean, I think we can fairly say that. Um, I say they were flown from the ground. Oh, Dave, that's a bit extreme. What do you mean they were flown from the ground? I mean, do we have the technology? Well, we had the technology in 1962. This is direct quote from Operation Northwoods. An aircraft at Elgin Air Force Base would be painted and numbered as an exact duplicate for the civil registered aircraft belonging to a CIA propriety organization in the Miami area. At a designated time, the duplicate would be substituted for the actual civil aircraft and would be loaded with the selected passengers, all boarded under carefully prepared aliases. Remember how few passengers there were on those 9-11 planes compared with what they would have been uh, in that early morning of uh, commuters. Uh, travel, normally. The actual registered aircraft would be converted to a drone, takeoff times of the drone aircraft and the actual aircraft will be scheduled to allow a rendezvous south of Florida. 
From the rendezvous point, the passenger carrying aircraft will descend to minimum altitude and go directly to an auxiliary field at Elgin Air Force Base, where arrangements will have been made to evacuate the passengers and return the aircraft to its original status. The drone aircraft, meanwhile, will continue to fly the filed uh, flight plan. When over Cuba, the drone will be transmitting on the international distress frequency a Mayday message stating he is under attack by Cuban MiG aircraft. The transmission will be interrupted by destruction of the aircraft, which will be triggered by radio signal. This will allow International Civil Aviation Organization radio stations in the Western Hemisphere to tell the US what has happened to the aircraft instead of the US trying to sell the incident. They never do that. Yes, they would. Um, so this is why we have um, a, a, a large number of um, pilots that fly wide-body jets coming together in an organization to say the official story of how those planes were flown and by whom is a nonsense. This is why we have um, engineers and architects, some at the, the peak of their profession, coming together in an organization in the same way to say the story of how those...